Hello, my dear friends. Uh, this is uh, Vipul Purohit, and you are watching my YouTube channel. Now, this, in this particular session, we are going to discuss about environmental chemistry. Oh my God, it's so boring. That is what you must be thinking about, right? Yes. And that is the reason I have tried my best to make sure that it's going to be presented in some different format. To begin with, when you talk about environmental chemistry, it's a very big domain of chemistry. You can do masters in environmental chemistry. You can do a PhD also in the, the field related to environmental chemistry. So obviously, all the concepts to be considered in one particular video, not possible. So we are trying to segregate it and we are trying to keep it as simple as possible. So as you can see over here, we are going to primarily focus on oxides of carbon. Now to begin with, due to the man's activities as well as natural processes, a lot of inorganic pollutants are emitted into the atmosphere, such as oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen, and oxides of carbon. Now, as I said, in this particular video, we are going to concentrate on oxides of carbon. Now, coal is considered to be very harmful to life. Why? What is the reason for that? Simply because it leads to the generation of gaseous pollutants. Now, the two very important gaseous inorganic pollutants of carbon are carbon monoxide as well as carbon dioxide. All right. So, to keep this topic as precise as possible and as interesting as possible, so we are going to concentrate more on carbon monoxide in this particular video. Here you can see carbon monoxide. So, to begin with, what are the sources of emission of carbon monoxide? Here we go. First we have is interaction of carbon dioxide with coke. Coke is generally carbon. The reaction takes place at high temperature where we are going to carry out uh, processes in furnaces such as a blast furnace which is generally used in steel industry and other metallurgical operations. Now this is going to produce a large amount of carbon monoxide. The reaction is carbon dioxide plus coke that is carbon as I said results in the generation of carbon monoxide. The next is automobile engines and furnaces. Okay, the exhaust of that okay, is going to produce carbon monoxide. Incomplete combustion. Combustion is all about heating in presence of oxygen. But if the amount of oxygen is limited, then that is incomplete combustion of carbonaceous matter, which is present in automobile. And of course, the agricultural and the slash matter. Next is petroleum refineries release a lot of uh, CO into the atmosphere. All right, refineries is all purification processes where we can get different fractions like petrol, di diesel, bitumen, and kerosene, and so on. The natural processes when we talk about, they are volcanic eruptions, forest fires, lightning discharge during thunderstorms, and seed germination. Now, what is the percentage of carbon emission? Let us have a look at this. Okay, so from this diagram, it's going to be very clear. The major part of the carbon emission, which is 73%, it comes from vehicular exhaust. Okay, next is going to be around say 17% is forest fires, agriculture and slash burning, and 10% is related to the steel, paper, and petroleum industries. Now we proceed towards the reactions and the fate with respect to carbon monoxide. So the first point is, my dear friends, you need to understand what is sink all about. The elements or organisms which consume a pollutant is basically called as what? Sink. So microorganisms in the soil act as a sink and it removes the carbon monoxide present in the air. During the combustion of carbonaceous fuel, carbon is initially oxidized to carbon monoxide due to insufficient supply of oxygen. So CO is the main product of combustion. But if the gases remain hot 
oxygen is available and therefore carbon monoxide is further oxidized to carbon dioxide. So you can have a look at this reaction. The first reaction is incomplete combustion of carbon and then that CO comes in contact with more amount of oxygen resulting in the formation of a carbon dioxide. All right. Now here we are making a comparison between carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Carbon monoxide and dioxide both of them are pollutants as I mentioned before. But if we go for a relative comparison, carbon dioxide is going to be less toxic as compared to carbon monoxide. The simple reason is it's a process of photosynthesis where carbon dioxide gets converted into oxygen. All right. Next is carbon dioxide at high temperature undergoes thermal decomposition and it produces carbon monoxide. All right. So you can see this reaction. It results in the formation of nascent oxygen and carbon monoxide. Now health hazards. Okay. What are going to be the ill effects on our health due to carbon monoxide? The toxic effects on human beings are first thing is CO reversibly reacts with hemoglobin in the blood. You look, look at the reaction. Hemoglobin, that is HVO2, hemoglobin has a tendency to bind to oxygen. But now when it comes in contact with carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide replaces or displaces the oxygen and it results in the formation of carboxyhemoglobin. Okay, so when the cells are going to be deprived of oxygen, this is what happens then. When CO and O2 are available in adequate quantities to saturate hemoglobin, then the concentration of the carboxyhemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin are related by the following equation. And from this part, it is very clear that the carboxyhemoglobin dominates the oxyhemoglobin and as a result of which, the cells, instead of getting oxygen, will be getting what? Carbon monoxide. Now, with respect to hemoglobin, see what exactly happens. The reaction, as I said, of carbon monoxide with hemoglobin, what exactly it leads to? It reduces the oxygenating capacity of the blood. It decreases the availability of the oxygen to the cells of the body. It lowers the rate of dissociation of oxyhemoglobin into hemoglobin and oxygen. And it causes what? Amnesia, that is oxygen starvation. Now, in spite of the fact that blood is carrying enough amount of oxygen, Okay, as compared to that of the body requires. But then what happens is the oxygen actually is not being released. Just because carboxyhemoglobin formation dominates the oxyhemoglobin. Now, what are the symptoms which are going to be observed under the different levels of carboxyhemoglobin that is being tabulated over here? So you can have a look at it. Uh, first of all, we go up to up to 0.4 ppm, that is parts per million. Um, symptoms such as physiological stress, breathlessness takes place during exertion, uh, there will be headache, uh, muscular weakness, uh, nausea, vomiting sensation, dizziness. Okay, all these are going to be observed. A uh, concentration of 0.4 ppm. Next is when we go from 0.4 to 0.7 ppm, it's slurring of speech, difficulty in speaking, uh, tendency to collapse, uh, convulsions, fatal coma in case of prolonged duration of poisoning. Okay, if the exposure duration is more, a person may be uh, transmitted into what? Coma. And of course, when the level reaches above 0.8 ppm, then it results in what? Instant death. Now, how are the control techniques being considered with reference to carbon monoxide? Here we have, first thing is, now once we understand what are the sources of emission, then of course, we can start thinking about how to control it. Okay, so first easier way is what? We change the fuel. Okay, we are using some natural gas. Okay, rather than coal or oil. Okay, rather than petroleum. Okay, we are going to use natural gas. That is not going to result in carbon monoxide. Uh, nuclear energy also doesn't produce any carbon monoxide. Alright, then the high temperature which is being uh, operated during the combustion process. Okay, that is another way why, by which the combustion process results in carbon dioxide. And as I previously mentioned, carbon dioxide is not a so toxic pollutant compared to carbon monoxide. 
We can also adjust certain parameters which affects the rate of emission of CO in the combustion process. Okay, that is recycling of fuel can take place, longer duration of circulation of the fuel gas. So that what happens is that there is enough time available for the oxygen to react and it results in a complete combustion and that results in the production of carbon dioxide rather than carbon monoxide. So this is it my dear friends. Carbon dioxide also is being considered as a pollutant but then as I said I want to keep it short and sweet so that you understand it. It is being interesting for you. That's what my uh, important parameter. So carbon dioxide will be continued in the next video. Thank you very much.